At the peak of the space race, as the USA made ready to land on the moon, a chilling discovery from the other side of the Iron Curtain had Soviet scientists stymied. The year was 1969. In the remote Siberian village of Rzhavchik, a humble miner, Ivan Karnakov, stumbled upon an ancient secret concealed within the depths of a local coal mine. This was, as Per A later claim, an 800 million year old sarcophagus cradling the remains of a mysterious woman. Thus emerged the legend of the Tissel Princess. This revelation was soon followed by a series of cover-ups, accidents, and denials that appear too consistent to be coincidental. Who was this Tissel Princess? Why was she buried there of all places? And what was so peculiar about this find that the entire Soviet establishment mobilized to keep it under wraps? Today, we can answer this and much more now that scientists have finally opened the Tissul Princess sarcophagus that was sealed for 800 million years. Let's get started. In 2002, an article published in Russia's Kakasia newspaper titled The Lady Who Is 800 Million Years Old which was later picked up by the RKM newspaper, brought the story of the Tissel Princess to the limelight. Allegedly based on information relayed by a retired colonel of the KGB, this article delved into the story of a surprise discovery from decades earlier, back in the heydays of the Soviet era that had been thoroughly censored by the brutal communist regime. Here's what the article and a now-removed 2014 Russian-language documentary on YouTube based on the same, told us about this historic find. In early September 1969, locals from the remote village of Rajavchik in the Tisul district, located in the Kemerovo region of Russia, frantically contacted the Soviet authorities about a monumental find in one of their coal mines. During a routine mining operation, Ivan Karnaukhov, a local miner, made a startling discovery. The miners apparently dug through a wall and at the core of it, buried some 70 meters beneath the surface, lay a meticulously crafted marble sarcophagus. Not sure what to do about this peculiar find, the miners did the only thing they could, contact the Soviet authorities. Upon reaching the site, Commander Alexander Alexandrovich immediately halted all mining activities and ordered the sarcophagus to be brought to the surface. Once there, the seal of the sarcophagus was broken. What lay inside astonished all witnesses. The sarcophagus was filled with a pinkish-blue crystalline liquid surrounding a woman of exquisite beauty, the Tiesel Princess. She stood approximately 180 centimeters or approximately 5 feet 11 inches tall with slender proportions and an aura of grace. Her features were distinctly European. Accentuated by her fair skin and slightly wavy dark brown hair that cascaded down to her waist. She was clad in a translucent white lace dress that reached just below her knees, adorned with multicolored floral embroidery. By the looks of her, one could say it was as if she was in a deep slumber rather than death. Her hands, soft and white, were complemented by perfectly short clipped nails. Plus, she was not wearing any undergarments beneath her dress. But most odd of all, adjacent to her head lay a peculiar black rectangular rounded metallic box measuring 25 by 10 centimeters. No one could make much sense of what was before them. The Tissel Princess had clearly been buried for a long, long time by some estimates for 800 million years, which was far longer than the entire history of humankind. Then there was her perfect preservation, her unusual dress, the pink liquid, and the metallic box. Moved by curiosity, one individual present there tasted this liquid and tragically succumbed to insanity within a week, meeting his demise in the same winter. Naturally, news of the discovery spread rapidly throughout the village, attracting the attention of the locals. By midday, a brick-red helicopter arrived, carrying a group of officials dressed in civilian attire. They swiftly declared the site contaminated and ordered the bystanders to evacuate. Shortly thereafter, the Soviet officers moved in and secured the area. All individuals who came into contact with the sarcophagus or its surroundings were then documented for further assessment. 
the officers overseeing the discovery of the sarcophagus attempted to transport it via helicopter, but it proved to be too heavy for the chopper. Naturally, to lighten the load, they drained the fluid from the coffin. However, upon doing so, the woman's body began to rapidly deteriorate, turning black in front of astonished onlookers. Hastily, they tried filling the sarcophagus back again, and this caused the blackening to reverse almost instantly. Since the body's preservation was contingent upon the peculiar fluid within, the officers deliberated on the safest course of action. They arranged for a larger helicopter, capable of bearing the weight of the sarcophagus and its contents. This time, with meticulous care and caution, they loaded the sarcophagus onto the sturdier aircraft. They also secured the remnants of the petrified putty or caulking material for the sarcophagus in plastic bags. The bystanders were ordered to disperse as the helicopter ascended into the sky, bound for Novosibirsk. Five days later, an elderly professor from Novosibirsk arrived in town. Here, he delivered a lecture at the country club, revealing preliminary laboratory findings. He asserted that the princess had been buried in the sarcophagus at least 800 million years ago. For context, this was long before the dinosaurs walked the planet. This was around the time the Earth was passing through the Carboniferous period, the part of our planet's history from where we get all our fossil fuel. Naturally, some speculated that the woman had extraterrestrial origins, but genetic analysis revealed a striking correlation with modern Russian DNA. Moreover, the sophistication of her civilization also complicated the discovery. The pink liquid also defied identification, so did the metal box. Local newspaper coverage was limited to a brief notice, and Rajavchik itself was encircled by military and police forces. The locals were asked to stay indoors and not given any explanation for what was happening. A few villagers defied these orders, prompting a crackdown by authorities. One outspoken individual even pursued legal recourse only to suffer a suspicious death attributed to heart failure. Subsequently, all six witnesses to the sarcophagus's unveiling perished in separate automobile accidents over the following year effectively silencing anyone who mattered. From the summer through late autumn of 1973, the authorities carried out further excavations with utmost secrecy along the shores and islands of Lake Berchikul, situated only six kilometers from the sarcophagus site. The area was similarly cordoned off by soldiers and police. Despite the stringent measures, rumors circulated among the locals. One laborer broke his silence in a moment of inebriation at a local mall. He cryptically mentioned the unearthing of an ancient Stone Age cemetery on the lake's islands, but did not spill any further details. The villagers also noticed the transit of a helicopter carrying whatever it was that the crew discovered. The landscape itself witnessed hundreds of meticulously excavated graves, only to be swiftly reinterred, leaving behind no discernible traces of the clandestine activities. So, that's pretty much it. Except, it's not. The story, as reported by the 2002 news article, has a bunch of problems with it. Skeptics even dismiss it as a mere fabrication inspired by Snow White and the Seven Dwarves. But on the other hand, proponents of its authenticity refuse to cave. What we know for sure is that, in general, efforts to suppress the truth were swift and merciless in the Soviet Union. Witnesses to events like these were silenced through threats and intimidation, and their voices were drowned by official denial. There have been all sorts of speculations about the discovery. Some contend that the Tisol princess may have been a member of an ancient civilization that flourished millennia ago. Her existence was preserved through unknown means for reasons lost to time. Others have tabled more fantastical theories, suggesting that she may have hailed from another planet or dimension. Another persistent speculation surrounding the Tisul princess is her potential extraterrestrial origin. Proponents of this theory point to her unearthly appearance, her remarkably preserved state, and the anomalous properties of the fluid in which she was entombed. Some even go so far as to suggest that she may have been a member of an advanced alien race, probably to shape the future of our planet. The theory of direct panspermia ties it all together. 
It suggests that life on Earth may have originated from microorganisms or biological material transported through space aboard meteoroids. Some proponents extend the hypothesis to suggest the involvement of an advanced alien civilization in deliberately seeding life on Earth. The highly advanced extraterrestrial beings in question must have had the technology and knowledge to manipulate life forms to shape our planet. According to this scenario, the advanced alien civilization from which the Tisul princess hails might have recognized Earth's potential as a hospitable environment for life and sought to catalyze its emergence. Coming back to our specimen, the preservation properties exhibited by the Tisul princess and her accompanying sarcophagus have baffled scientists and researchers since their discovery. Various theories have been proposed to explain this phenomenon, ranging from the presence of unique chemical compounds within the preserving fluid to the existence of advanced preservation techniques employed by ancient civilizations. Some speculate that the preservation properties may be linked to the fabric of the princess's dress, suggesting that it may be able to withstand the ravages of time. However, despite extensive analysis and speculation, the true nature of these preservation properties remains elusive, shrouded in the mists of uncertainty. But we don't know more than this, and this should not come as a surprise to most, considering that first-hand sources for the information are almost non-existent. The people who reported the discovery were quoting KGB agents and researchers who worked on the specimen but their testimonies, too, came decades after the Tisul princess was originally unearthed. Plus, for the Soviet Union, secrecy was a fundamental aspect of governance and society. The Soviet regime, under Stalin and subsequent leaders, implemented extensive measures to control information flow, suppress dissent, and maintain power. The government tightly controlled all aspects of life, including media, education, and culture. Censorship was pervasive, with state agencies monitoring and censoring newspapers, books, films, and other forms of expression to ensure they aligned with the communist ideology and party directives. The state also had formidable security agencies like the KGB tasked with surveillance, espionage, and repression of dissent. These agencies operated a vast network of informants and conducted extensive surveillance to root out perceived enemies of the state. The government classified a wide range of information, including military, scientific, and technological data, as state secrets. Access to classified information was strictly controlled, and unauthorized disclosure could result in severe punishment, including imprisonment or execution. This also extended to the realm of science and technology. Here, the Soviet Union prioritized secrecy to safeguard its military and industrial capabilities. Many scientific research projects were conducted under strict secrecy, particularly those related to defense, space exploration, and nuclear weapons development. Moreover, the government enacted laws such as the State Secrets Act, which criminalized the unauthorized disclosure of classified information. This legislation empowered state authorities to prosecute individuals suspected of leaking state secrets. The Soviet regime also engaged in historical revisionism and suppression of information about sensitive historical events. Naturally, the story of the Tisul princess only broke out to the rest of the world once the Iron Curtain was pulled down. But all of this still does not explain why the Tisul princess seems so out of this world. In fact, parts of the story appear to be works of science fiction, even if there is a semi-rational explanation for these things in the realm of academia. Well, there is one other explanation for all of this. If you're skeptical about the whole Tisul Princess story, don't dismiss it as a hoax just yet. There may be some degree of truth behind the story. The answer lies with the Siberian Ice Maiden, revered locally as the Princess of Ukok among other names. This archaeological specimen sheds light on the ancient Pazaric culture of the Eurasian steppes. Discovered in 1993 within a burial mound on the Ukok Plateau in the Republic of Altai, Russia, 
the mummified princess is one of the most significant archaeological discoveries of the late 20th century. As reported in a famous PBS documentary from November 1998, the Ice Maiden was a Scytho-Siberian woman from the 5th century BC. Much like the Tisul princess, she was found intact in a subterranean burial chamber. Dr. Natalia Polosmak and her team made the discovery during the summer of 1993, marking the culmination of their research into the early settlements of southern Siberia. Polosmak, then a senior research fellow at the Russian Institute of Archaeology and Ethnography in Novosibirsk, had been leading expeditions to the Ukok Plateau for several seasons. The Paziric culture, to which the Ice Maiden belonged, flourished between the 6th and 2nd centuries BC in the Siberian steppe. These people have left behind a rich legacy of artifacts and burial practices that provide valuable clues about their society and way of life. Situated on the Ukok Plateau near the Mongolian border, the Ice Maiden's tomb was discovered in a region known for its harsh, arid climate. Despite the challenging conditions, the plateau holds significance in local lore. With its frigid winters and unforgiving terrain, the plateau posed numerous challenges to the excavation process. However, the research team uncovered not just the Ice Maiden herself, but also a treasure trove of artifacts that offered invaluable insights into the cultural and technological achievements of the Paziric people. Over the years, Dr. Polosmak's research has been documented in various publications and media outlets, including a National Geographic article from October 1994 and a BBC documentary from 1997. Kurgans were mound-like burial sites for the ancient peoples of the Eurasian steppes, composed of sediment and rocks. These mounds often concealed tomb chambers containing elaborate burial arrangements, including log coffins and grave goods. The Ice Maiden's tomb, nestled within one such kurgan, provided a window into the burial practices of the Paziric culture. The Ice Maiden was likely interred in the 5th century BC during springtime. Before reaching her burial chamber, the archaeologists encountered a secondary burial atop the kurgan. Here, they found a skeleton and three horses, likely belonging to an outside group. Dr. Polosmak theorizes that these individuals, possibly subordinate to the Paziric culture, chose to enter their dead within Paziric kurgans as a mark of honor or respect. Over the years, as water and snow had infiltrated the Ice Maiden's hollow burial chamber, the moisture froze, forming an ice block that preserved the contents for over 2,400 years. The combination of the steppe climate, permafrost, and the mound's rocky covering shielded the Ice Maiden's tomb from thawing, allowing for its remarkable preservation until Dr. Polosmak's excavation. Inside the Maiden's tomb, Chamber lay her intricately crafted coffin, hewn from a solid larch wood tree trunk, adorned with leather appliques depicting deer motifs. Accompanying the coffin were two small wooden tables that were probably used for a ceremonial feast. These offerings symbolized provisions for her journey into the afterlife, reflecting the beliefs and customs of the Paziric culture. The Ice Maiden and her horses were positioned with their heads facing east, a common practice observed in Paziric burials, signifying beliefs related to the cycle of life and rebirth. Radiocarbon dating estimated her age at the time of death to be between 20 and 30 years old, shedding light on her youthfulness at the time of interment. For decades, the cause of the Ice Maiden's demise remained shrouded in mystery. However, recent studies conducted in 2014 suggested that breast cancer, compounded by injuries from a fall, led to her death. Interestingly, the researchers also found cannabis near her body, which hinted at its medicinal use, possibly to alleviate the chronic pain associated with her conditions. Although she is known as the Princess of Ukok, the Ice Maiden was not an actual princess per se, but she still commanded an elevated status within her community, possibly as a priestess. Adorned in elaborate attire, including a yellow silk tussa blouse, a crimson and white striped wool skirt, and thigh-high white felt leggings, 
she was buried with regal dignity befitting her esteemed position. Notably, her headdress, towering nearly three feet tall and adorned with intricate carvings and gold-covered feline figures, underscored her prestigious standing among her peers. Examination of the Ice Maiden's preserved skin revealed intricate tattoos, including depictions of animal-style deer on her shoulder, wrist, and thumb, suggesting cultural significance and personal adornment. Additionally, artifacts such as a small mirror with carved deer figures and remains of coriander seeds in a stone dish provided further insights into her daily life and rituals. However, debates continue regarding her societal role, the significance of her burial artifacts, and the implications of her medical conditions, prompting ongoing scholarly inquiry and public fascination. Moreover, the excavation, while conducted with meticulous care, faced challenges, particularly in the preservation of the mummy during transport and handling. The methods employed to melt the ice surrounding the coffin and remove artifacts and the body resulted in some deterioration, including fading of her intricate tattoos. Despite efforts to maintain optimal conditions, the mummy suffered from preservation issues highlighting the delicate nature of such archaeological endeavors. Soon afterward, a dispute arose between Russian authorities and local inhabitants regarding the ownership and interpretation of the Ice Maiden's significance. Local intelligentsia revered her as the symbolic progenitor of the Altaian people, mythologizing her role in Altaian heritage and identity. The Ice Maiden naturally serves as a focal point for discussions on Altaian autonomy and representation within the Russian Federation. It represents not only ancestral heritage, but also resistance against perceived encroachments on cultural autonomy. A local journalist articulated the sentiment using the Ice Maiden as a metaphor to address the challenges faced by Altaians in asserting their rights and identity within the political landscape of Russia. Claiming ownership of the Ice Maiden became synonymous with asserting territorial and cultural sovereignty over Altai. Following years of debate and negotiation, the Ice Maiden was eventually returned to Altai in September 2012, where she found her final resting place in a specially constructed mausoleum at the Republican National Museum in Gorno-Altaisk, the capital of the Altai Republic. This marked a significant milestone in the recognition of Altaian cultural heritage and the acknowledgement of local sentiments regarding the mummy's importance. However, concerns persist regarding the preservation of other artifacts and burial mounds in the region. The prohibition of future excavations, as requested by the local Altaian population, raises concerns about the potential decay of undisturbed mounds due to climate change. Archaeologists fear that without intervention, valuable cultural and historical resources may be lost to environmental factors, underscoring the delicate balance between preservation and conservation efforts. Plus, DNA research conducted by the Russian Academy of Sciences yielded insights into the Ice Maiden's genetic makeup, revealing disparities between her DNA and that of modern Altaian communities these findings fueled debates over the mummy's ancestry. Naturally, some archaeologists assert that she had a European heritage, contesting the Altaian claims. However, such assertions are viewed within the context of broader cultural and political dynamics, with indigenous Altaian identity and autonomy perceived as under threat from dominant Russian nationalist narratives. Did you notice something? If you didn't, here it is. The stories of the Siberian Ice Maiden and the Tiesel Princess share intriguing parallels. They are similar on so many accounts. The Siberian Ice Maiden was discovered in 1993 on the Ukok Plateau in the Altai Mountains of Siberia, Russia. The Tiesel Princess was allegedly discovered in 1969 in the village of Rzhavchik in the Tiesel District, Kemerovo region, Soviet Union, which is now Russia. Both of these locations are in Siberia. Moreover, both women were remarkably well-preserved, 
with the Ice Maiden dating back to the 5th century BC and the Tissel Princess purportedly dating back to 800 million years ago. They were found in burial chambers constructed to protect them from decomposition, with the Ice Maiden encased in permafrost and the Tissel Princess reportedly submerged in a liquid-filled sarcophagus. Descriptions of their physical appearance and attire paint a picture of remarkable beauty, with intricate details provided about their facial features, hair, and clothing. The Ice Maiden was adorned with intricate tattoos and buried in elaborate garments, while the Tissel Princess was depicted as wearing a translucent white lace dress adorned with flowers, European features, and long, wavy hair. Both women were buried with significant ceremonial rites, accompanied by various grave goods and offerings, suggesting beliefs in an afterlife or spiritual journey. Food, drink, and other items found in their burial chambers hint at the cultural and religious practices of their respective societies. The Siberian Ice Maiden's tattoos became denatured during the excavation process, much like how the Tisul Princess started to blacken when the excavation crew drained her sarcophagus. The former was not intentional, of course. During the meticulous process of excavating the Ice Maiden's burial chamber and transporting her remains to a laboratory for further study, her delicate skin and tattoos were exposed to various environmental factors and handling procedures. The permafrost in which she was discovered helped preserve her body over centuries, but the sudden exposure to warmer temperatures during excavation likely caused some degree of degradation to her skin and tattoos. Additionally, the thawing and rehydration processes may have contributed to further deterioration of her tattoos. Despite efforts to minimize damage and ensure proper preservation, the delicate nature of the tattoos, which were made from organic materials like soot or plant pigments, made them susceptible to degradation. But overall, while the Ice Maiden underwent extensive scientific analysis, including DNA testing and radiocarbon dating, the Tissul Princess lacks verifiable documentation or reliable scientific studies confirming her discovery or age. This disparity has led to skepticism and controversy surrounding the Tissul Princess, with some suggesting she may be a myth or hoax perpetuated for political or ideological purposes. It is very much possible that the real-life story of the Ice Maiden may have inspired an exaggerated or distorted account of the Tissel Princess. But in any case, the truth behind the Tissel Princess remains elusive, with conflicting narratives and speculative theories. While some view the legend of the Tissel Princess as a fantastical tale rooted in folklore and mythology, others suggest that there may be kernels of truth within the story waiting to be unearthed by further investigation and exploration. Ultimately, the truth of the Tissel Princess may never be definitively known, but the fascination and speculation surrounding her story serve as a reminder of humanity's enduring quest for knowledge and understanding. As we contemplate the enigmatic tale of the Tissel Princess, we are reminded of the complexities of history, the mysteries of the universe, and the endless possibilities that await discovery. In the absence of certainty, we are left to ponder and debate. So, what's your take on the 800 million year old woman? Let us know in the comments section below. Well, that's it for now. Thanks for watching. Don't miss this video you see on your screen right now. It's truly unbelievable.